is it? Okay. Oh. All right. So, time is in three, two, one, go. No, too late. Zim, what are you doing? All right. So I am Nature Blink. I will be running the Sex Human Revolution. And to start off the game, there is a wonderful five to five and a half minute unskippable dialogue. And like, what did you mean back then? Not really a cutscene, but it just found it. Blast Nothing. for a while. It's just my nerves talking. Megan Hype. There's something I should know about this place, about Sarah. Megan. All right. Oh. Still getting so, chemical fluctuations across this would be a pretty good time for donations. But the increased neuropeptides coming from the PDOT cluster could be throwing off the calibration. <laughs> There's right. none. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so, what this cutscene is, is it basi it's basically just setting up like the background of the story. You're a, uh, sec you're a security guard named Madam Jensen. This is Megan. And basically you're trying to protect her, but stuff happens, bad stuff happens. And that's this cutscene in a nutshell. So this this uh, game was run in AG, AGDQ 2012 by Chris Engine, and then his time was 148 I think, and now after like two years, like he played through almost the entire game, and now we skip probably half the game. So now, th like an average time is about 106, 107. So like the parts that will be skipped are. Uh, all of the first time you go to Hangsha, and then when you go to, or you skip part of the Pikes Communications building, and then you skip all of Detroit too. So he had to go through a lot of things, like he had to worry about, uh, like finding windmill, finding, like just going through all of those quests in Hangsha to be able to get into Taiyang. But now we can just use a glitch and get right there right away. And then for Detroit, you just have to do the social battle with uh, Taggart, and now we, you meet Taggart once in this game, and, and he used to be like a major kind of antagonist to the game. And then there's a new skip found just last week actually, which skips the ending uh, conversation with Hugh Darrow. So now he's kind of in a similar situation with Taggart. You see him like once in the game, and he's like supposed to be one of the yeah. biggest characters in the game. He's a good man. I don't even know. A part of me likes him. Well, I like everyone, don't you, Reed? Yeah, the right read. <sighs> Alright, so we're about to meet the probably the most likable character in this game, Mr. Frank Richard. If you haven't played this game, you'll quickly understand why he's probably the best character in this game. Look how smug he looks. I'd better hurry. See you at the village back up. Sure. Did I interrupt something, Jensen? Fix that firewall yet? You don't fix an entire firewall. You find a loophole and plug it. Then did you plug it? Yes, I did. Alright, so I'm gonna briefly kinda introduce the like the main glitches that we use throughout the run. Because it's all based off the same idea. It's Sarah has to see you too. It's just like a huge kind of glitch with the physics engine. What you can do is you can use an object, usually a box, and you throw it against yourself when your back's against the wall, and it'll the box kind of just pushes you right out of bounds. So you clip through walls pretty easily. We'll be doing that around four or five times, and a couple more times with other objects that aren't boxes. That look kind of different, but it, it works the same way pretty much. Lyle, the hearings will go 
Alright, so we're near the end of this cutscene. Yes, sir. Capital Police will escort us. This is David Sarah. His ending is one of the possible endings that oh, I will choose for this run. She explained it to you. Not really into the whole science thing, boss. It's incredible. All those purists out there accusing us of tampering with the natural. Oh yeah, when do you want to cut off donations? Um, when I hit the final level will be when Pancha. I'll say when, but it's gonna be when I kind of ride like a rocket. Okay. It sounds weird, but it's yeah. You'll, you'll understand when you see it. Laboratory subsection six. Because it doesn't really change the run until I have to physically go and see Sarah for Taggart. Alright. Alright, and the game finally starts. Let's go! Alright. Richard, where's Meg? Did she report in yet? So the first example of one of these uh, clips I was talking about is gonna show up right around here. Instead of a box, I'm gonna use a fire extinguisher, but it, it works pretty similarly. Richard, Richard. All right, so I'm just gonna take this fire extinguisher here. I could throw it, but throwing it can make it break sometimes, and it's just not fun. So now I'm here, and nope, messed it up. Alright, and now go. I'm down here. You see that he's supposed to break through that door, but you don't actually hit the trigger, <laughs> so he just kind of stands there forever. Alright, this next room is one of the times where I can die in the prologue, but it's not really hard, it's just kind of luck. Alright, it's good. I went kind of slower, cause, so the door closed, but it's kind of safer if you wait a little bit longer. Cause there's a chance that those guards will remain inside the door, and because they'll, they'll hear you for some reason, so you have to kind of run past them and make sure they don't shoot at you. And this is the other room that can make me die in prologue. I'm trying to run. Yeah, the NPCs in this game are real snipers. Yeah. There's like a 5%-ish chance where they can headshot you, which is just an instant kill. But it's really only an issue in the prologue, so... It's kind of good, but you have to go through the cutscene every time you have to reset, so... It's not as good as you might think. Do we have time to get a roll call from the couch? Um, I'm Shadow Draft. I'll be commentating. I am Yeti. I heard that. Over there. I am Waffle. Alright. That's prologue. Oh. <laughs> On the couch frame. Whatever works. And if you don't know Ice Pluck, then you haven't been here all day. Yeah. I'm your donation reader, Steven. Wintergreen. You in the building? Alright, so this is one of the times in the game where you, you have to wait so for a conversation to end. So you just kind of do other stuff Let's while you wait. But open those doors because I need to go there eventually. It doesn't really save time, but it gives me something to do. Frank's on the second floor in the tech lab. I can't talk to him Make until I'm done with Sarah. About time. What happened? And he'll be it's stealing a lot of stuff from over? other NPCs. <laughs> yeah. Bit of a theft. Something's wrong with my retinal display. Can you fix it? If it's what I think it is, probably. Of course. And this is the last. Well, now it's the last conversation in the game where you can't just skip through by spamming the space bar. But don't worry. You used to be stuck on the Darrow scene too, but now we skip that. So this is the last one. So after this, you won't be really seeing the dialogue. I'll just be skipping through it. Won't be picking up hostiles yet, but you should be seeing radar and targeting reticules. Biomedical data too. You done here? Because Sarah is waiting for me at the Hollow Pad. I know. Radicals have broken into our manufacturing plant and taken hostages. Maybe this time you'll actually save people. Lucky for you, I'm gonna ignore that comment. We're done here. Yeah, Frank's kind of a little bit of a meanie. <laughs> All 
Alright, so now I'm just gonna have to run to the uh, helipad. Do we have time for some donations? Yeah, go for it. We have a ten dollar donation from Kieran Forrester. Hey guys, I think this it's great what you guys do. Keep PR up the speed nightmare. and let's make it to a hundred thousand. We have another ten dollar donation from Andrew Bell. Psychonauts is one of my favorite games, so that speedrun blew my mind. Thanks for all the great work Ghost all of you runners of are doing to support Doctors That's Without Borders. He's an augmented atom, so we can't be one of their mercs who attack I kind of lied. You can't skip through but this one, but it's just exactly one line. How to get inside our plant. All right, so this coming up part, it's this won't look hard, but I've died so many times here, it's really not funny. Jensen, it's me, Pritchard. Where are you? On a roof of right, my plant. Good. Your point of entry should be through shipping and receiving. Should be. So if you don't, uh, if you don't grab onto that ladder, you hold the ground and you just die, and you can't quick save yet because you're in a conversation. So if you're so it gets really assault, annoying, you fall you and die. Accessing the building's roof. Pritchard. Take this con the oops. Take the concussion for later and shoot that guard. The typhoon is in the factoring labs. There's an elevator just Yeah, this new stun gun we'll is our new it. best friend. Oh yeah. Until we get our frag mines, but <laughs> those come later. We have a twenty dollar donation from Michael Chase. I had to stay up till two in the morning to watch one of my favorite games Jensen, being speedrun. Shoutouts to, to all the runners and also Alliance to Fexus. Someone's changed the protocols. What? Didn't you plug the? I'm on it. But until I find this particular breach and fix it, you'll have to hack the These door manual. These cyber boost bars he's picking up are for later augmentation. Right. What they do is you eat them and it refills your energy. Right. Oh hey camera. No. Oh. So if you if the camera spots you when you're first running through, there's a guard at the end of the hall that will see you and it's not good. So I might just wait here to be safe. Just wait till it turns a little bit. Alright, that's safe. If I can clip through the air vent that I like I try to do, then the camera is not facing this way. It's kinda of facing the way that it was when I waited. And I can just run through easily. But you don't really save time if you don't get it while you have to wait, because I can't open this door until then. Because those rooms serve as like the triggers that load uh, the rest of this level. We have a $7 donation from Plague Father. Hello SGDQ, Plague, Fa Plague Daddy here, showing some love for my buddy and fellow DXHR runner Nature Blink. Ooh, Plague Father. Wish I ended up going, but good luck on your run, man, and let the box gods be with you. <laughs> Thanks, Plague. Oh, come on. Alright, so... So, before the run, I turned off the setting for post-processing. And it's really weird, but when you turn the setting off, the flash, uh, like any concussion or flash grenades, don't actually last as long as they should. They last for a split second. And then they should go away. It allows us to shoot the turret really safely. Adam, it's David. You got the I mean, I say safely and I die, but you were right about it's supposed to be safe. Behind this, because I've also got a dead purist in here with some pretty interesting cerebral implants. Don't touch him. We'll need an expert to recover his neural hub in case it's booby trapped. Copy. All right, so you'll see this. Uh, Sanders. What I was talking about about the concussion coming up here in a second. I'm gonna throw a concussion grenade at two guards, and, and they'll be affected, and I won't be, pretty much. We have a $5 donation from Hanky. Hey, Nature Blink. Good luck with the run. Hope to see some crazy cloak zero strats. Otherwise, <laughs> may the box be with you and rummel. Greetings to Shadow Draft and Broman. Oof. Yeah. Hanky currently has the record for any percent. Yeah, for both uh, the regular vanilla version, which is what I'm running, and the uh, director's cut, which includes the DLC. Please don't do zero cloaking strats. I'm not going to do zero cloak <laughs> strats. I'm not that crazy. Not a chance. This ends now. All right, so nice. <laughs> yep, and we're gonna be mean and shoot these uh, SWAT guards too. Sanders is down for the count. 
Swaddle want to question him, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't know a thing. Somebody else. Yeah, you have to shoot those SWAT guys because their weapons are yeah, really valuable. We need the money. Uh, what about the hostages? I don't really lose time because I have to wait for Sarah to talk. <sighs> but yeah, I'm, I'm going to use their weapons and sell them uh, later on to buy some Praxis kits. And Praxis kits are what you use in case you didn't complete this game. They're what you use to unlock your augmentations. New York. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what we're playing on. Give me the SX. Alright, so now we're heading back to our good friend, Pritchard. Who, even though we didn't kill anybody, like, he's still gonna be mean to us. Well, you didn't rescue the hostages. That's true. <laughs> but he sarcastically calls us Gandhi, because we <laughs> saved people. Yeah. We didn't kill any of the people who were running the plant. I don't really get it, but he's a unique person. Now we're heading back up to Seraph, which is where we were at the beginning of the game in the cutscene. And we're just going to have a nice little chit chat with him. We have a $30 donation from Peter Preston. Love you all and massive thanks for what you guys are doing. Big shout out to Melbourne Gamers. Big shout outs to all the runners. RIP sleep. All right, so now we're going for a little uh, kind of new, very old trap, but it's called the old lady skip. So I'm just gonna spam my shoot button and see if I can get this off. No. Nope. So now, what's supposed to happen is you take out your gun and you fire oh. as the cutscene starts, and what she says is, please don't shoot. But then you don't have to do the conversation with her. It's not a big deal at all. It saves like five seconds, but it's just fun to have a skip called the old lady skip. <laughs> yeah. I'm right, gonna pick up this bar here. And now for another one of the meanest people in this game the guard at the gun store. Oh god. <laughs> we'll see if he's gonna be mean. Because sometimes he likes to stand in the middle of the store and just not move. And nope, he's being nice. Wow. That was good RNG. Yeah. Because, like, like, he, he can doesn't move. block oh, you sorry. for several seconds. Yeah. He's, he doesn't really move right away. He just kind of, like, stares at you, like, what? You mad that I'm standing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to, like, kind of do a crown stun. Crouch jump, try to like sneak your way through there. It just, it's just really annoying. It looks weird. It looks bad. Oh, you wanted a good run? Nope. Nope. I'm staying here. And you can't use the other door either, which is kind of weird. Adam, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's barred, I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. Good. Right now I we'll want to check. Uh, yeah, it is. Gotta run to the police station and get his neural hub. And Adam. Oh yeah, the police station. The police station. There's gotta be another entrance on the side of the building. So the police station is one of the harder parts of the run, but it's it all depends on one thing. If you touch a guard, then there's a chance that you won't go hostile inside. But when you leave the building, there's these police guards all point out, but they'll go hostile. So you won't know until you can you finish the police station. But you you can't go on because there's just these guards out there, these police officers. Waiting there with like shotguns, waiting to kill you. Yeah, another runner, or rather, currently only glitch hunter for this game, uh, Abjum, <laughs> did some zero cloaking strats for this level, and it's really insane. Yeah. It's not recommended at all. <laughs> nope. All right, so you, I got. Whoa, watch out! I got three levels of cloak there because I'm a noob. The actual levels of cloak just let the cloak uh, last longer. In the top left, there's energy bars, which are like their batteries, which are what the uh, the protein bars are used to replace. Yeah, but 
Boss, I got the neural hub. Looks like it's been modified with some kind of wet drive. Pritchard should have a look at it. Ooh. No, don't bring it here. Frank's not finished running his diagnostic, and I don't want to risk connecting any tech to our networks till he's done. Alright, good. If that guy is too far back, you have to kind of wait behind him, and it gets really awkward. Alright, nice. That guard right there is one of the, like on the way in and the way out, is the guard you can bump into, and be good. And then these guards out here will become hostile, and you won't really realize it until you leave. Jensen, I have a message for you. From one of your former colleagues. Well, you I didn't get the troll at station. Alexander, <laughs> Jenny, what did you want? She said she could use some help if you could make your way over to Grand River Road. And might I oh, just and you'll see them kind of spamming the run key. It's office. just a little bit faster I than uh, like running until it's empty and then letting it refill. It just oh. gives you more uptime on your sprint. You're not using the um, jumping glitch? Uh, I don't really believe in it. I, it saves time, but it's like. I just don't like it. Yeah, over the course of the run, it's like eight, eight seconds. You, yeah. It's one of those things oh, you do Richard. once you've oh, already done everything perfectly, and you're just like, well, I need to save well, four seconds <laughs> yeah. to improve my world record. Let's do this then. <laughs> right. There's a couple more of those. The throwing the fire extinguisher in the prologue is one of those. Computer. Saves like three seconds, but if you mess up, you reset. And then throwing a box later, which I'll point out. Yeah, throwing objects in this game is really dangerous. Yes, you're sending yep. me to Highland Park. Because they, they like to break. Frank's figured out why the network's been compromised. There's a persistent transmission coming from Derelict Row. Like they can survive well, one or two drops to the ground, but other than that, ballers. you should be really careful with the boxes. Right, you see me throw like most boxes, like one or two times, unless they're reinforced. Or they're the metal ones. Kind of the car it's like the weak looking carbo ones you have to watch out for. And the one I'm gonna be using like five to six minutes from now is one of those. Now we're gonna head into Derelict Road over here. And then here it's still public territory, so even though they're your enemies, they won't uh they won't go hostile, they'll just be kinda mad at you, they'll threaten you. But they, they don't actually do anything. But here is when they will. The transmission that's making a mockery of your security. So we have to efforts? use some cloak. It's keeping a back door open into our network. None of us are secure unless you find the antenna that's sending it and shut it down. But cloak makes this game anything. Or at least like this part pretty easy. As long as you know when to use your cloak wisely. Alright, we're gonna grab a pistol and two frag grenades for later on in the run. If I can grab it. We'll use the pistol in the next uh, part, at the start of it, and then we'll use the frag grenades near the end for the boss. Where should I steal their candy? Because <laughs> gangsters don't really need candy. We have a $20 donation from Mike Egan. Deus Ex back to back with Sly Cooper. Thanks for running these great games. Good luck. Alright, so now we have to go pretty slow. You have to crouch and then toggle walk. It lets you sneak up on these mines and take them. And these are the frag mines I was talking about that just completely destroy bosses. Yeah, these mines are really important. They'll be used for one or two boss quick uh, kills, I think. Two. Two. Boss, is that back door still open? Back to little Jensen no, dance. Jensen dance. Yes. Frank just sent me the all clear. Now it's time to find the bastards who attacked us. Farina, are you standing by? On the line, boss. I'm gonna Jensen, reload here. Me? Loud and clear. Stay close Switch to the antenna. Mind. So this is another example where you have to up. wait for the dialogue to finish. Yeah. Once the dialogue finishes, the helicopter starts to land. Yeah, at least this is an invisible wall where the helicopter can despawn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so once it lands, you just you leave. Mr. Jensen, your limo has arrived. You ready to leave? Yeah, let's go. Great. Detroit local. This is Seraph Industries Bravo Echo Echo Zero Zero Eight. Continuing on. Also, oh, fun okay. fact. 
all those house hog guys didn't see that helicopter landing. Yeah, they, they just ignored it. <laughs> and the two guards that were up there kind of just left. <laughs> I was only able to pinpoint right, the proximate so. area, Jensen. So scout I'm going to shoot out this window before I trigger a cutscene because the guards aren't actually spawned yet. So there's nobody that will go hostile. Unlike right now, which there are. This is the box I was talking about. You can throw it through the window that you just broke through, but if you miss, the guards will hear you and then your box can break. It saves like five seconds because you're, you can run a little quicker without holding on to the box, but it's really not a, like a big deal because it would be right up here. We have a $35 donation from Lagnarek. Hey guys, y'all are awesome. Thanks for doing that for us viewers and for the good cause. You're enjoying my day at work here in France. All right, so we have another box up here with actual boxes. The one this one takes me to get. But basically, I'm just throwing the box against me, and if I get it right and the, the box is uh, parallel with the wall, then it should push me through. And what you saw just there at the last um, clip attempt, he clipped into the wall a little bit, and if you crouch, you like fall through the world. <laughs> yeah, it's really dangerous to crouch, which is why I kind of waited before I did it. So these clips yeah, are that not that safe. No. There we go, finally got that. Nice. Thank you, based box strats. Yeah, box strats are awesome. Yeah, the box completely carries you through this game. <laughs> Alright, now I'm gonna pick up some money. Because we're waiting for the elevator to come up. We have a five dollar donation from Cranky Pancake. Yeah. Cranky Pancake here. Had to stay up for one of my favorite games ever. Shout outs to Plague and Heinke for helping me learn the game. Save Malik. Alright, so if you've played this game before, you'll know this is the elevator you're supposed to take up after you beat the boss to return you to uh, the helipad where Malik gets you. But because we glitched through the wall and we activated the, uh, like the elevator button, we're able to just write it down to the boss room. Although not quite, as you'll see, we oh need yeah. to do another block, uh, box clip. We have a $20 donation from Robert L. Love that you're doing this and such a deserving organization to receive the donations. Good comments. Scary boss music. Yeah. The game kind of thinks you're in the boss battle now. Because you're basically in his arena, as you'll see in a second. And this box flip is probably the hardest one in the game because you ha there's like a very precise point you have to be in. And as you see, like I'm getting like 85% th through, but it's like not enough for just this part. Here we go. Now I'm gonna collect some stuff here, me later. A frag and my second DMP grenade. Now those mines we got, we're gonna throw two down here. Right there is where the boss spawns. And now we trigger the boss. You'll see the, the floor isn't actually rendered in yet. I don't really, we don't really understand why that is, but yeah. I'm guessing it's just that the trigger for loading the floor is different than loading the rest of the room. And that was a boss. Yeah, that was a boss fight. <laughs> All the bosses in this game will you. die to five, no, either frag out. grenades or uh, frag mines. Right? So That's by doing sir. these two box clips, we skip through uh, the outside of this park there. area and the actual uh, FEMA factory that's down below. And this is kind of one of the first uh, major deviations from Carcinogen's run a couple years ago, was that we didn't know about uh, how the boxes and collision worked. So he went through the factory and uh, snuck through. Right, we're gonna trigger the to helicopter. Here, yeah. But it takes a little time to so jump in here and, and take this candy bar. All 
Alright, so now we get the speed run augment, we get the uh, the faster sprint augment and the higher jump. So like the big uh, plus side for doing one cloak or three or zero cloak is that you're able to get the uh, sprint augment faster. So when you're running through Detroit early on, you run faster so it takes less time. But the trade-off is that you only have one cloak so it, or zero cloak. And so the police station is much more dangerous. And this is Taggart. And that is all you'll see from this game pretty much. Except if you're donating you're for us ending. Right. If you donate for him, we see him in the final level when we go meet him and quote unquote save him. <laughs> but saving him just consists of you going down to where they're hiding, talking to them, and leaving. Currently, the bid war is at $299 for Seraph ending, $174 for Self Destruct, and only $32 for Taggart. I just enjoy keeping you on edge. Ten minutes, Jensen. Make it snappy. Alright, so now we head into our office because we need to talk to Mr. Frank Richard. But we don't really care about what he says or the side quest he tries to start, so we just leave. So from now on, we're going to be doing a lot less of the game and a lot more skips. Like, to, to put it into perspective, like, this is close to, like, the halfway point of the run, but this is, like, supposed to be, like, a quarter of the way through the game. So right now, you're supposed to have to find uh, Tong, talk to him, then find this guy named, uh, I think his code name's Windmill, and talk to him. And these guys called Bell Tower, which you never really see in the speedrun. Like, kind of sh uh, chase after you. That's unfortunate. Huh? Where did it go? Oh, uh, I fell down. We're going to be using this box for another clip, and there's no boxes down there, so we have to throw one over. But there's a lot of junk up there, so it can get caught or bounce back. So you're supposed to have to find a like a key card I think to unlock this door and you'll get through after you you're finished with Hang Shop, but we can just use box clips and get through the door eventually. We have a thirty five dollar donation from Wolfgang. Love the stream. Looking forward to all the other great runs yet to come. This goes towards the Seraph ending and playing as Carrie in Castlevania sixty four. Damn it, box. Yeah. We have a That's ten dollar donation up. from App Jim. Oh App no. Jim here. Best of luck with the run nature. Garo <laughs> skip hype. <laughs> box strats are great for donation reading. Thank you, App Jim. Yeah, thank you, APJ. So I said that the earlier one is the hardest, but for me, this one and one later, which is just like it, are the hardest for me. I don't know what it is, but it's just like you have like those uh like the cube shaped boxes and you're just going up against like a regular wall it's just i can just never get them but hopefully i'll get the next one that's later on like all right so yet. i'm right here i'll take the safety staring bar. at the of the tai Yong medical building great i need access to a security terminal in the upper city tower so that one skip that took me like a minute to do which is pretty slow for our, our standards ends up, ends up skipping like 15 minutes of the speed run So we'll save this guy because we're nice, but... There's also another reason to save that guy. Um, you need to get a specific amount of experience right. to unlock some more um, prex points. And... Yeah. Basically... Not killing people gives you more experience, and Ghost is another one that gives right. a lot of experience. Ghost is when you don't get detected at all. But while those give you more, as it turns out, skipping large parts of the game 
Uh, main drip at under level. Nothing too taxing, I suspect. The Pangus use mostly for maintenance and storage. Look By the way, what's the worst part for we'll vanilla percent? What's the worst part for what? For vanilla. Oh, the, ooh. Um, I would say probably the FEMA factory, which is the bear, which is the first boss we did. Because those two, uh, those two clips are probably two of the harder ones, and then. Uh, because you use three grenades Jensen, on Barrett, for, exactly. there's a chance that if you throw them like off timing, a grenade blast will kind of push and move over another grenade so that you won't be able to kill him with the uh, grenades you have and you have to reload. However, the next boss, I use five mines, so I don't have to worry about that at all. <laughs> and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Five mines versus uh, four mines, one grenade. We have a $15 donation from Biff. Hi everyone, I'm glad to be here for another SGDQ. Your logistics is really impressive. Thanks to everyone who participated in this amazing event from far and near. We support you from the French Restream. Thanks to Mr. MV and the whole team who deal with this Restream. I would like to put this donation to rename Yoshi as Muxy and Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Thank you for your devotion. Alright, so there's no really skips in this part, just using Cloak to basically just skip through most of it. Because you can go through the lasers when you're cloaked and they don't go off. Uh, and we don't use Cloak for these lasers because I don't really care if they go off as long as they don't go off right away. Because when they go off, the the bot comes out and so do these guards. But they'll basically never even shoot at you, so... As long as you don't go hot, as long as you don't set them off right away, you're always fine. Boss, did you get that? I heard. I, I, I just. Megan and the others, they're alive. Uh, mess it up there. If you touch the lasers, the alarm goes off, and you can turn off the alarm, but the guards Boss, are just in a weird position. I heard. I, I, I just. Megan and the others, they're alive. We've got to stay focused. Nice. Zawa's a residence at the top of the tower. It's off limits to everyone except her and her guards. Now get up there and find out what she knows. Yeah, we're trying to cloak through these idiots. We don't realize that why there's like a door opening <laughs> and nobody's there. And by yeah. the time they realize it's too late. The AI in this game is really good yeah. sometimes. And this is one of the longer elevators, so they have donations, and now's a good time. We have a $123 donation from Ezco. Great games, great people, keep on playing. Greetings from Finland. Very straight into the point. You haven't noticed now, you will later, but there's a lot of elevators in this game. It's what they use to, uh, like, load the next area since it's, like, partially open world. It's, like, hub based, but. So this is pretty much just, like, a giant loading screen. And, like, hype builder for this next part. It's well concealed. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so now we're in, like in the uh, the penthouse of a lady that we don't really we haven't met yet. We'll meet her again later, but Adam, what the hell did you do? The entire building's on alert. Panic room. She's got a goddamn panic room. Yeah, well, so do I. Forget about her right now. All right. Best guards. Yeah. Oh, if, hey. if you touch them, then they should go hostile. And there's uh, usually one or two guards who wait in that last room. So if you go hostile. They will shoot at you, and luckily for us, they're the ones with the shotgun, so they will one shot you. Alright, so coming up, we have. This is kind of like a mini boss almost, but you can just use two, for, uh, two EMP grenades, and you'll just kill them. 
Yeah. Those uh, bots don't like EMPs. <laughs> no, they don't. Alright, so this is our time we have to wait. You have to wait for the helicopter to land. Before we do that, we're going to take this, uh, the, the jar of energy and run over here and take the grenade. Jensen, time to hightail it back to Detroit. Get in. We're not going to Detroit. What? We're going to Montreal. I'll explain en route. Damn right you will. So this is another skip that's been discovered since Carcinogen's run. It's not that big. It saves about three minutes in the speed run. So you can jump on this and nice then fall. Nice first try. Uh, yeah, I got it. But I can't push myself. But believe it or not, this is actually out of bounds. <laughs> it really doesn't look like it, but... Yeah, <laughs> it is. Alright, so... Jump down. We're falling out of bounds, and we'll land on the funicular. Sadly, you can't just land in it and then start going, but... We're able to skip through all the part with finding Eliza Kazan's office. Be on your and and the funicular, will the funicular is a timed together. event, it's... It uh, I think it's two minutes. Not to worry. I'm sure you're oh, you're not putting up a box? No. I'll keep you up to date on this I use Thanks the older nothing. strats for this. Oh, okay. Which are r riskier? I really shouldn't, but <laughs> yeah, it worked out for me this time. Sometimes when you cloak in that room and try to shoot that guard, the other guards will either hear you uh, shooting him, or that one guard won't leave. He'll hear you when you're cloaked, and bad stuff happens if you go hostile here. Jensen, I've been tracking your progress through the 3D layer. You ever seen me try to race this game and go hostile there and lose like five, ten minutes, or just get stuck in general? You'll understand. You'll have to call it and wait. Oh, and Jensen, when you do, they're going to. So because to it's a timed event, are. we can't really do anything yet. I haven't gone in here yet. We're gonna take the darts. The funicular is halfway there, Jensen. And take the bar. So we go back and gather some EXP that we kind of missed by skipping the area. But we just hit the trigger for it and we get it without really doing anything. So we shoot that guard here. And just run through these guards. Well, that was close. So as long as I'm not really unlucky, they won't come over here. And I can just wait behind this box until the funicular is arrived. If I'm unlucky, I just have to go under there, though. So it's not really a huge deal. So there is a backup strat. A little more Jensen dance. Hey, where's the guy going? <laughs> Goodbye, guard. <laughs> oh. Normally I cloak and run into the thing just to be safe, but he loves. I really don't even have to. There, I guess they Get found over. the other guard. Probably. Alright, so while I'm in here, I'm gonna pick up two augments from my inventory and combine the mine template with my frag grenade. I'm beginning to think that not everything is what it appears to be. Now I've got five fr uh, frag mines instead of four the frag mines and, and a frag grenade. What this is, is it, it's just safer for the next boss Spare coming up. Uh, there's no chance for one of your blasts to move the grenade so it doesn't hit the boss. And like you can't miss it. It's just overall safer and it only costs you like three seconds to do. To some areas of the network and kept away and this would be another time for donations. No security system. I know oh, can let's do get through some shout outs. This is uh, Summer Games Done Quick. We're raising money for Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders is an international medical humanitarian organization created by doctors and journalists in France in 1971. Today, Doctors Without Borders provides independent, impartial assistance in more than 60 countries to people whose survival is threatened by violence, neglect, or catastrophe, primarily due to armed conflict, epidemics, malnutrition, exclusion from health care, or natural disasters. In 1999, Doctors Without Borders received the Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts. Summer Games Done Quick is hosted by Speed Demo Archive. 
the premier community for video game speedruns, completing games as quickly as possible through extensive planning, practice, and knowledge of game mechanics and glitches. Also hosted by Speedruns Live, the best site to race video games online against others. Players of all skill levels are welcome to join, whether you'd like to become competitive or just race casually with friends. Be sure to come to speedrun li speedrunslive.com for more information and to watch a wide variety of speedrun streams. All right, so we're guessing those guards, so we can do a clip up here. Now there's nobody to bother us. If I would have crouched there, there's a good chance I would have just fallen through the map. So the path that we take at the end of this game is determined by bids. And currently, Seraph is in the lead with $299. Right. Self-Destruct is second with 174 Taggart is third with 32 And Daro is fourth with a measly five. No love for Daro. No love no. for Daro. I don't love him either, though. <laughs> All right. So I took too long in that last time, so... The guards upstairs end up coming. There we go, finally. There we go. Come out. Nope. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> that skips through uh, wandering through the basements a bit. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna throw, I throw two mines, run out of the way, then she quickly throw the three, they all blow up, and she didn't die. Interesting. Yeah. I'm guessing one of the first ones was off and it missed. But. Oh no. A little mark. Alright, so. That's why a quick save here is because this autosave can be bad at times. As you see, it kind of saves. Like right when I'm throwing the mine. There we go. Nice. So we're gonna run through here a little bit, then turn back. That triggers the ele or the helicopter to come down, but you can't interact with it right away. So we use this time to pick up some items for the rest of the run. You only need the two uh, the cyber boost things by picking up the uh, typhoon to, to show off a little time saver. As you see, I had to wait for the el for the uh, elevator. Or just happen. To wait for the helicopter to be um, interactable. You ready to go? Yeah, take us home, Alec. Amen to that. All right. So this next part is probably the weirdest, uh, weirdest outcome with the glitch in the game. The glitch itself isn't weird, but what it does when you go through. Uh, after you do it, you, you go into the Seraph building, and it basically just takes you to the end of the chapter. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go into your apartment, talk to Seraph, and do other things. And then at the end-ish, you go back to the, your apartment, and you go to the helipad, and the Malik takes you, and you go to Seraph. But we don't do that. Instead, we go to Seraph a different way, but the outcome's the same. Ooh. It'll make more sense once we get there, and I'll explain it more then. So it's oh. gonna be. R r oh, That's right. a barricade skip, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay, they make it very obvious you're not supposed to go there. They make a huge, giant, like a metal barricade, and it just blocks your way. But thankfully, we can go around it. Sadly, we have no time for basketball today. 
We have a $20 donation from Artem. Thanks for hosting such an awesome event for such a wonderful cause. You okay, sweetheart? This is a reinforced box, like I mentioned earlier. You can throw this one around pretty much as much as you want, and it's not going to break. The yellow bar that you'll see for a little, like a split second, is its health, and you'll see it basically just stays at full. This so box is going places. It is, right here. So what this is going to skip is it's going to skip the social battle with the uh, tagger, and then going into the sewers to find his assistant. All right, got that second try. Nice. That's actually really difficult. Yeah, because um, there's only a very small part behind me where I clipped into that solid. If I go too far back, then it just, I fall out of bounds, and I keep on falling until I die. So I entered Seraph Building, and you're not supposed to be able to enter it until the end of this chapter. So I enter it from here, but the trigger is that anytime you enter Seraph's Building, it takes you up to here. So this is the part I was mentioning before, like, when you finish with the level, and, uh, Malik uses her, hel her helicopter and she drives you over here. You talk to the boss and then you leave. It's a pretty good run so far. Yeah, not bad. Everything except for the box clips have been pretty good. Yeah, and the that one mine being a huge troll. Yeah. All right. So we can just skip that and run back in the elevator. I cutscene's another uh, another appearance by Mr. Darrow, but we skip it, so it's another time where we don't see him. All right, so. Malik has been great to us all game. She's ferried us around places. She's come to save us. She's always there when we need her. And then the one time where she needs us, we're in a cloak and run right past and not help her. <laughs> it's a cruel game. Cruel life. Malik, we've got company. I know, but the bird took some damage. We're gonna need so you get shot down by the bell tower guards I mentioned earlier. But we we can't really save her. So we run past. You out of here yet? Bye, boy. Malik. Just find Vasily. And then, because we didn't save her, the game forces us to watch her die. Bye, bye, asshole. Go to hell. And he's dead. Farina. No. No. Malik. Actually, on the first day, there was a donation um, for you to rescue her. Yeah, I saw <laughs> that. You can th you can rescue her but easier. That setup is ridiculous. Yeah, it was something I would never do in a marathon because it would. <laughs> it's really hard. It's pretty RNG, and you have to go out of the way to pick up stuff to do it. It's another strat that Afton found. Yeah. <laughs> so, it might be don't do that. <laughs> so I had to wait there, I'd be able to open the door. But basically, you just look around, you take extra gas grenades, and you throw them, and you hope you get all the guards before they kill her. That's basically how you save her in a nutshell. But, remember, we're on the hardest difficulty. And just running through the gunfire without them actually firing at me, I lost like a decent chunk of health. So imagine when you have like those seven guys all shooting right at you. It gets pretty hard. They are snipers. Yeah. So there's still the chance that they can just headshot you and kill you in one bullet. So this guy likes to stop us because we're wanted, so we just cloak and run right past him. Hi, these guys who are not doing their job very well. Like, I can be able to run past them without cloaking. And there's like, yeah, what? What? Billy Bell Tower. Mr. Jensen. And because we don't like Darrow that much at all, Mr. we're just gonna Jensen cut off his conversation, so. Me of your <laughs> and, and he's done talking. 
So we're not we're not actually doing any skips here, really. It's just it's a case where we already know where to go, and we're just gonna be able to do it really quickly. You're supposed to follow the uh, the GPL thing that Pritchard mentioned at the beginning of the game and throughout the game to find one of the scientists that got captured at the beginning of the game, which we don't even really know this because we skipped through a lot of the cutscenes, but he's here and he's dead. So instead of having to look through, look for him, we know where he is, so we're just going to go right there. And we're going to meet a guy who we should have met much earlier in Hangshaw 1, which is the first time we're in Hangshaw, Mr. Tong. That's yeah, twitching. He, he talks a lot. And we, we pick up the laser rifle, but that's not for much later. Alright, so you see, uh, I'm occasionally there's uh, little glitches in my UI. That's part of the story. So there's a, there's a side quest that says to get your... Um, like the chip that's in your head, it's, uh, uh, it works with the basically the HUD that your main character has to get it fixed, but you don't want to do it, one, because it takes time in a speed run, which we don't like, but two, it makes the next boss much harder because it disables your augments if you get the fix. So we're just going to jump up here, crouch, and cloak past the guards. Actually, this next boss fight is really dangerous. It's... How did you get this if I get unlucky, it, it gets embarrassing almost, but... Yeah. You're going to plant that package in Administrator Wang's office. Put it on you the see, like, me spamming a number? It's not me doing that. There's a glitch where it'll uh, multiply the first input you put into the keypad. So you just have to kind of... If you don't notice it, you just put in the wrong code and try again. But you only got one shot. No turning back once you trigger that thing, you get me? I got you. Only set it if I'm ready to go. I'm amazed that you don't have any notes on you. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought <laughs> I would need them, but I was able to memorize them. After doing it a while, you just know them. There's only two codes that get confusing. And so the two that start with the fours. Something's wrong. The four, five, eight, nine, and I like uh, four, eight, and six, five. Later, I lost your GPL signal. Oh. It's like you disappeared into a black hole. Gotta be a gem. All right, so we're well, gonna flip through these guys. If you can find a transmitter and take it offline, I'll be able to track you. But yeah. These guards are not good with their job. They're like, <laughs> like I'm going visible again. They just don't see me. If Megan and her team are I'm uncloaking here. If if they catch me, they'll go hostile. But it resets here anyways because it's like it's too far away. They don't want to work that hard for me, so they just, they just stop. All right, so we're gonna take this box over here. But now you can probably guess what we're going to do with this box. We're going to make magic happen and skip the Omega Ranch part of this level. So this is the other one I was talking about that's similar to the uh, earlier box up in Hangsha. You have to make sure the box is parallel with you or else it'll push you slightly to the left or slightly to the right, like you see there, I get pushed to the right in there. Oh. Yeah. Not inside the box. <laughs> no. There we go. Nice. And now we're taking the elevator down to the boss. So another one of the scientists that got kidnapped is in the building that we skipped but who cares about her? He's not Megan, so I don't really care. And Namir. Let's see if he's going to be nice. I'll explain what him being nice means in a second. Alright, he's nice. So you're not awesome. supposed to be able to use a takedown on a boss, but when he goes <laughs> over the ledge, you're able to use it on him. So as long as he behaves and he goes over the ledge right away, then you can just do a quick takedown and he's, he just gets killed instantly. That kill is so glorious. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, Megan's alive and she's there, but... Yeah. He'll talk to us in a second. It's pretty sad that you skip him in Director's Cut. Yeah. In Director's Cut, they fix the takedown glitch, so you can't kill him with it. 
So you do a typhoon glitch, which is why I grabbed a typhoon ammo for to show you a small one. And you just go out of bounds and you bypass it. And you find the door that we opened to go to Megan's room out of bounds and you just enter it and it loads the rest of the map. What a yeah. typhoon glitch is, is it's you're basically using the typhoon ability and that kind of like pushes you up and out. So you can use it to go out of bounds or go up stuff. Alright, we have to wait here before we can activate the button. Alright, go to the countdown. We're going to take a trip to the moon, so... Let's go. That's not how you board a shuttle. <laughs> it is Graham <laughs> Jensen. Alright, so this is the final level, so I need to know the results of the bid war. For the the final game. results are Seraph with $299. Seraph it is. Alright, Seraph. Seraph of UN delegates? Nothing. The installation went into lockdown shortly after It's kind of fitting. He's the only one out of the three people that you really get to meet and talk to, so <laughs> it's pretty fitting. So, quickly explaining, the four endings are basically one self-destruct, so that nobody really knows what happened, and they get to interpret. You have Darrow, who wants to say that, like, he wants to use this as a warning that augmentations are scary. You have Taggart, who wants to use this to kind of frame the pro-augmentation people. So that like there are stricter regulations on like the medicine that goes with it, and Seraph wants to blame the uh, purity first guys, which are the guys in the manufacturing plant, which is the first level, and he wants to blame them so people start like they kind of become on his side. So this is the pro augmentation ending, and we shout out those so that we can one quickly get to this elevator, and then two we can quickly go out go over to the other side and uh, leave this place. Alright, so coming up we have a pretty pointless uh, Typhoon clip, but because there's no more Typhoon clips in the run, because this is a director's cut and doing the box clip is better than the Typhoon clip for Namir, because you can still do the Typhoon clip that director's cut uses, it's just harder and uh, like just dangerous to do. So I'm gonna take Typhoon. Move back here. This will look really weird, but it'll make sense in a second. So look where I am now and hopefully I'm now upstairs. <laughs> it saves like ten seconds maybe and you're now in the range of the turret so it can shoot at you if you're unlucky. But it's pretty cool. Alright, so now we're gonna do pro the new glitch, the skip Darrow glitch. Nice. So you just go here. I gotta spam a typhoon and spam quick save. So we're gonna basically trigger the conversation and then just skip it. Come on. This is a really perfect timing. Yeah. Yes, nice. First try. Awesome. So that skips a five or not five minute, like a four minute ish. Mandatory conversation with ta with uh, Darrow, where he kind of just like criticizes you, says you're stupid, you don't understand his plan. <laughs> so, just doing that cuts off a solid three or four minutes. And the conversation with him is RNG, so sometimes your responses are good, sometimes they're bad. So we have to get the Casey augment so we can always fail it, because <laughs> whether you fail it or not, it's the same outcome. And it's quicker to fail it, but it's it just saves time overall. And now we get to save the two uh, augmentation points. So this is why we opened up the two the, the windows over here. So you can just go through, jump, jump. Oh hey, hello. Hello. This is why we get. Hold on. This is kind of what? <laughs> That's weird. Am I cloaked? Uh, who cares? Okay, I died. Wow. That's incredibly unlucky. 
load later save. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> it basically never happens. Thankfully, there's an auto save here, but because I missed the first jump, they got here a little bit faster. I'm guessing just the RNG2, uh, their like patrol pattern, they were kind of closer than they, than they normally are, so. Yeah. So a mix of a lot of bad RNG and me messing up a pretty easy jump. Alright, so this is Taggart, but we don't like him, so we're not going to save him. So we're just going to fall over here so we can avoid the crazies. And the crazies are people who kind of went insane when uh, you dare of, like, uh, overstimulates a certain part of the augments. And it's like driving the people insane. Megan talks about it briefly in the one uh, dialogue part where we kind of waited for the shuttle. Alright, so this is Seraph. Actually, we're gonna do this a different way. So, we're gonna take the silo. What this taking the silo means is that we have to wait for the elevator, but overall it's safer, so I'm gonna do this. We need to stun these uh, crazies down here. It isn't permanent, so I need to kind of be quickly, move quickly. And we're going to go through this event. And this event takes us right to Seraph. And the only way back up is the elevator that we, I was going to use to come down. And you have to wait for it to come down, but you can wait safely and it's pretty much just uh, quicker and safer to do it this way. And you'll see why it's safer in a second. So we can't really go back up the silo, we just dropped like 50 feet down. <laughs> so instead, we have to pretty much become Batman and just climb on like the roof, on the pipes and ceiling. So. Cloak and run. Alright. And a bit of a waiting game now, because the elevators actually work like elevators, and so because it's waiting for us up there, we have to wait for it to come down. And then write it back up. But by talking to Seraph, it unlocks the ending. So that when we go to the, after we kill the final boss, we go into the final room, uh, his button is now unlocked. So there's gonna be three potential buttons, and then one to the side. Uh, Darrow's is always unlocked, and you have to go talk to Sarah for Taggart to unlock theirs. And then there's a self-destruct button to the side that's always unlocked too. So you have to uh, go through, wash apart, and find Sarah and Taggart in order to unlock their endings. We have a $20 donation from Greg H. Keep up the good work, you guys. Watching you play through these games is amazing. $10 to the Pokemon Red versus Pokemon Gold, and $10 to whatever the runner would like. The so same rule as when we were running past those armed guards in the penthouse. You touch them, they'll go hostile even though you're cloaked. You have to kind of jump and run your way through there without touching them, hopefully. And the last elevator of the game. However, like I said earlier, the uh, the elevators are used as loading screens, and so to kind of poke fun at that, they even say loading on the elevator. So this is going to load the final boss's arena and herself. Now the final boss really doesn't make sense because we never see her, but it's the woman whose penthouse we went into and who uh, called the guards on us. It's like, she ends up getting hooked into a machine, and we kill her very quickly. So normally this last boss is pretty hard. You have to worry about uh, some robots and stuff, turrets. So overall, it's pretty hectic, but I don't think the game realized that her health 
is less than the damage it, uh, a laser rifle has. <laughs> so it's actually really, really easy. Yeah, the laser rifle is carrying this last boss fight. Yeah. It makes the last boss, instead of the hardest boss, it makes her the easiest. And you'll see why in a second. So just take it out and open the door. Zoom in and shoot at her. It's really hard gaming, guys, trust me. I feel so skilled. And she's dead. <laughs> Alright, time's gonna be coming up soon here. Good boss fight, 10 out of 10. Yep. There's Eliza Kazan, which she's referenced, but she's never really talked about, and Seraph. So, this is Darrow's ending, this is Seraph's, that's Taggart's, and I'll show you the self destruct. That's self destruct. Yes. Alright, that's time. Time? Time. Alright. Nice. That's pretty good. <laughs> good job, dude. That was Deus Ex, Human Revolution.